Hello. This is our third installment, which means after today, we officially have a series to binge. And here's another teaser. This could be the most exciting episode in the series yet. Three, two, one. Alrighty, I see sulfur, I see hemimorphite, I see tanzanite. I think that's an imperial topaz, which means we are actually gonna talk about the orthorhombic crystal system today. And I know that because tanzanite, hemimorphite, sulfur, and topaz are all members of that crystal system. So this is gonna be super fun. Okay, so before we dive in, I'm actually gonna throw to Elizabeth and she's gonna kind of give you the rundown of why a crystal system is important, touch on the ones that we have covered already, and touch on the orthorhombic crystal system. She's probably gonna show you some beauties, and then we're gonna come back and dive into this box and talk about gemstones, crystal systems. So hang tight, and we're gonna have some fun. So the orthorhombic crystal system was our most requested crystal system that we had on our last crystal system video. So we're going to be showing you guys a spread of what comes from the orthorhombic crystal system. There's actually a, over 300 members of this crystal system. With that, there's a ton that like not many people have ever heard of, but we're gonna focus on the ones that are the most popular. So we're gonna try something a little different today. I know you can see the dry erase board and the marker in my hand. And so we're gonna try to draw the orthorhombic crystal system, the unit cell, and then show you guys what the symmetry is like. So the orthorhombic crystal system is a rectangular prism defined as having three axes or three planes on it that are unequal, but they all come together in 90 degrees. So we're gonna draw that as A does not equal B, does not equal C, but alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma is equal to 90. So, which means that it's a very ordered crystal system. So that is not only one of the definitions. So also it has three twofold axes of symmetry, meaning that you can rotate around this point 180 degrees. So you have a line here, a line here, and then because I'm not the best 3D drawer, you have one that comes through the center right there. So those are our twofold axes of symmetry. Now you also have three mirror planes basically where you have a sheet of paper go through it. So that, that's about the easiest way that you can describe it. So it's a plane rather than a point or a line. So you have a plane that goes through the center here and divides it vertically. You have one that comes through this way in the middle, divides it through the middle, and then you have another one that comes out through the front and that is really hard for me to draw. But you guys can totally see where I'm going with this. So you basically just divide this rectangle into three equal parts. So vertically, horizontal in both directions. And then there's also a single rotational axis right there in the middle. And so that is how we define our orthorhombic crystal system. You may be wondering how this all relates to these really awesome crystals and to their gemstones. So what's really interesting about this is that crystallographically, this means that we have three separate axes that light travels differently down all three of those axes. With these guys, when you're testing them, you will actually get two different shadow edges that move and we call that doubly refractive. And this means that we can have some really awesome trichroic gemstones like your tanzanite because you get that purple and then blue and then a pink direction. Well, and then you have andalusite, which you can see all of their pleochroic colors in their cut gemstones, which is really beautiful. So we're gonna start off with one that I think receives a little 
little less than enough credit. I mean, it's, it's actually a really interesting stone. They are often used in jewelry. They come from Mexico. So they're kind of on the scale of your topazes and they have this really, really nice crystalline shape. This is actually a very, very typical orthorhombic crystal shape. You probably have all seen Celestine at some point as a mineral specimen. It's actually really common coming out of Madagascar, but I wanted to show you guys something that is actually really rare. So this is actually a really beautiful faceted Celestine. These guys are really, really closely related to barite, which is one of my favorite minerals. So really what the difference is, is you have Celestine has strontium in it and barite has beryllium. But their structure, a typical structure of a Celestine crystal is actually exactly like a Danbrite. And thus you guys can start seeing where all these patterns begin to emerge. So we're gonna go to this guy. This is actually pre night from Norway, and you don't see a whole lot of these on the market. This is a really old piece. A lot of times we call these betroidal when they're a little bit more smooth. So this is, this is still betroidal, but I would call this much more crystalline than typically that you see. What's neat about that is so we can facet those. So you can actually get gemstones kind of like this. This is a pre night that is not Norway in origin, it's probably from India or somewhere like that, but you can see those little betroidal crystals actually create these really neat, like almost cat's eye type gemstones, but not quite, that there's like this cloudiness to it. And that cloudiness is actually caused by all of those individual crystals coming together. So then another one, and this is actually a rare color, so if you guys have the SGR, this is actually the pre night gemstone from the SGR. Now this is just an absolutely beautiful faceted pre night. A lot of people actually think it's sulfur because of that yellow color. So pre night can come in a bunch of different colors. Most pre night is that really pretty kind of a limish green with a little bit of yellow to it. Again, you guys can tell it's not perfectly clear. That's because again, you have all of these different individual crystals coming together to make a entire formation. A lot of you guys may know olivine by its more Jimmy name, which is peridot. So here we have a really pretty little peridot crystal. I can actually see the lily pads in it, which is pretty neat. And that tells me right off the bat that I'm seeing some peridot. We also have our crystal. So this is a really nice little crystal from Afghanistan. So peridot crystals are not typically in a beautiful terminated crystalline shape. They come in more of what we call a massive formation. So what's really interesting about olivine is that in geology, we can use it to actually see like the amount of metamorphism. We use it to identify different things out in the field as long as we know the chemistry and the makeup of the actual olivine. So then are we are to our final one. So this is a cerusite gemstone. And the first thing I want you guys to notice is just that awesome dispersion as you roll it back and forth. So this has just some absolutely incredible dispersion. I've seen mineral specimens with this dispersion in it. That's how high of a dispersion it has. So these are, they're just a really rare gemstone. They're just so difficult to facet that people just don't take the time to do it. It's pretty soft. And then at the same time, the cleavage planes on it are just intense. But the other thing I want you guys to notice, so look at the facets on the back of this stone. Notice there's not that many. So there's really not that many facets. Now look at the front. There's a lot. It looks like there's a ton. Well, that's because you're seeing some extremely, extremely strong double refraction. So you're actually seeing doubling of all of those facets through that stone. That's also one of the ways you can tell that this is cerusite is just that extremely stupendous, stupendous dispersion and the double refraction. Now, the way that you can tell this part from calcite, because calcite has a lot of double refraction and a lot of dispersion is how heavy this is. So cerusite is also called white lead and it is a lead carbonate mineral. And it's actually one of the most important lead ores on the planet. And then here, finally, this is 
our little cerusite crystals. So this one's a little bit darker. Most cerusite is not a really pretty colorless, clear crystal. A lot of times they're kind of smoky, kind of cloudy. But what I like about it is you have this really beautiful, distinct orthorhombic crystal in shape and you have a twin. You can actually see where some of the inclusions inside of it are doubled. So this, so even in just the crystalline form with no polish, no nothing, you can see that awesome, intense doubling. So now we're gonna throw back to Natalie. She is gonna start getting all of her awesome gemstones and specimens out and let's see what she's got. Elizabeth is awesome as always. And now we're gonna jump into what is actually in the gray box. Number one, we have tanzanite. And the reason I know it's tanzanite is because of that luscious, deep, beautiful color. It looks like velvet. It is clear, it is gorgeous. This is topaz. Yep. This is topaz. I think this is the Swiss blue. We got a really cool cut. This is imperial topaz. Imperial topaz is actually mainly found, if only found in Oro Preto, Brazil, but it's kind of known for that, I'm gonna say like this kind of like peachy pink, almost orangey color. All right, right here, this is not dried Gatorade. This is actually sulfur and sulfur has that awful rotten egg smell. We've actually had sulfur on the channel before. And if you wanna watch that episode, it was with Scott. It was shot in Tucson. I totally got stumped. And if you wanna check out that episode, you can catch this link right here. Click this link right here. After this video though. But right here, we actually have Crystal Barrel. And we've had Crystal Barrel on the channel before, but not like this. So Alexandrite, Emerald by Day, Ruby by Night, one of the coolest stones in the industry. It's actually color change. It was originally found in Russia, in the Ural Mountains, and it was named after the Tsar of Russia. So we've got stones here from literally all over the world. And the one thing they have in common is not their color. Um, it's not a pattern. It's not, it's not even a, a story of who mined them. It is their crystal system. And I think that's really cool how you can and learn about a lot of different stones and see what their commonality is, and that's their crystal system. That's really important because it can help you identify a piece of rough if you know your crystal systems. I want you to take a closer look at this tanzanite. Look at the cool structure of the specimen. Look at that beautiful color. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. A big thank you to Elizabeth for jumping on the channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Like always, we've got awesome, awesome content coming up in the future. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching.